I mean, our project, Retune, is linking music and well-being, mm. um, creativity and mental health. And there was one particular, particularly interesting passage that stood out in the book where you outlined the three things that people tend to need for uh, positive mental health. Number one was therapy and or medication. Number three was a supportive friend or mentor. But number two was a creative outlet, which... Yeah. Um, you know, it was quite high in the rankings, and uh, you know that's something that we'd really like to to explore. What 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 do you mean by a creative outlet? Well, creativity is anything that um, you can lose yourself in, and anything that allows you to express difficult emotions and and almost I, I guess kind of exorcise them. Music is a really good example, as is art, um, drama, dance, creative writing, even sport can be a very creative endeavour. Mm. But it, the advantage of all of these activities is that they are, with the exception of creative writing, they are ways of expressing yourself wordlessly. And one of the things that I talk about in the book is that in English we've got this quite sort of restricted emotional vocabulary, so sometimes words won't do it. You know, if I'm trying mm. to convey to you how I feel, words can be an inadequate tool. Whereas it might be that I can paint it for you or I can play you a piece of, piece of music mm. and it will more accurately convey what I'm going through. Well, there's that quote of where words fail, music speaks. And right. That, I suppose that's that, that kind of idea. What, what do you think is the link between creativity and mental health? Is there a strong mm. link there? There's all kinds of research that's been done into this. The, most recently, the APPG on creativity, which is a thing that exists, mm. they, publi that much, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they published a report looking at the link between creativity and well-being, particularly on focused on education, because when schools have budget restrictions, you will often find that it's the creative subjects that are the first to go, mm. because of the way that schools are kind of measured and um, it's all on sort of academic attainment. So you, you'll find that they're seen as optional extras when in fact that you know they are a form of intelligence but it's just not really recognized in education which is so strange to me because i think you know we're the biggest fear that people have is that in the future robots will be able to do everything but robots will never be able to be creative in the way that human beings are mm -hmm. and they'll never be able to be kind they'll never be able to care for you in the way that humans can so surely those should be the two skills <laughs> that yeah. we're teaching children if we want to prepare them for the future. Um, so that's kind of the point that's made in the report. There's also a link between um, creativity and bipolar disorder. But the point that I make in my book is that they are retrospective studies. So they've kind of, they've waited until somebody's made a name for themselves in an artistic profession. Right. Yeah. And then they've, then they've gone, and does this person have bipolar? Which mm. isn't really a very <laughs> scientific study. Yeah, um, I suppose Stephen Fry sits in that category. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And but then I think, well, you know, because I, I do a list in in my book of people who have had a significant impact culturally who have mental illnesses, and then I wonder, well, I could have made an equally long list of people who have had a cultural impact who don't have mental illnesses, yeah. but because I have a mental illness, I'm drawn to people who... Or do have a mental illness <laughs> and may not have made a cultural impact as well. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, and you said, uh, one of the reasons why sport, art, music and other creative activities are so effective and therapeutic is that they are a way of connecting human beings with the life that they were designed to live. Yes. So creativity is actually something that it serves a purpose from an evolutionary perspective. It kind of it allows us to um, relax, re release the kind of um, adrenaline and cortisol from our system. It allows us to bond within our communities. You know, we're pack animals. We're, we're supposed to exist within communities. Um, and when you look at um, tribes and the way that they live, they will spend around seven or eight hours of the day hunting and gathering so exercising, and then they all come back into to their communities and they'll always do something like sit around a fire and tell each other stories or make music. There'll, there'll be some kind of creative endeavor which isn't, uh, you know, it, it's not practical, mm. but it, it's built into the way that human beings were supposed to live. And good for the soul. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and, and also it can kind of provide a way certainly in modern society, of 
being part of a community, being part of something, you know, yeah. f fans of music artists that kind of stick together and have that commonality. So could you say that's another important thing with, with music? I mean, a sense of belonging is one of the key, there's five key psychological human needs and, and belonging is one of them. And I remember thinking actually that um, as I talk about extensively, both in my book and on social media, I am, um, a ridiculously big fan of David Bowie. I, I don't know if fan <laughs> <laughs> does it justice, really. Um, but I went to, um, they, they did like a tribute gig where it was his band from the reality tour. So it's, um, I don't know if this means anything to you, but it was Gaylan Dorsey on bass and Mike Garson on keyboards and Earl Slick on guitar. It's like the best band in the world. Yeah. And then they had kind of guest vocalists coming in doing the Bowie bit. Um, and that sounds amazing. Oh, yeah. it was brilliant. And uh, you know the guy from Spandau Ballet, what's his name? The lead singer, Tony Hicks. Tony, Tony Hadley. Yeah. yeah. He did this amazing rendition of Changes, which good I singer. did He's not, did not yeah, see yeah, yeah. coming. Yeah. <laughs> but I was looking around at the audience and I was thinking, if they're, you know, David Bowie is an artist that covered so many different genres, but if there's one thing that unites all of his music, it's that the theme is kind of alienation and of feeling different to mm -hmm. the other. Which and he was. Yeah. Yes, yeah, and yeah. kind of outside the mainstream. And I'm looking around at these thousands of people who have come to this tribute concert and I'm mm -hmm. thinking, isn't it ironic that if you got together all the people who feel alienated, we'd probably outnumber the people who feel normal. Sure. Yeah, yeah. What is normal, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I think it's always nice with these to ask about, you know, music can do a lot of things for people, but there's certain go-to songs that, that we have um, and I was just going to ask you for two of them, what would be the go-to song for you to, if there's no one around, turn up extremely loud and dance like crazy, what would be your song? I think Iggy Pop Sunday. Okay, great. And <laughs> on the, uh, the flip side of it, um, a song, the songs can also be a source of, of escape, yeah. um, us to really kind of go into ourselves very emotional, maybe have a little cry, what would be, you know, at the other end of the spectrum for you? Um, I think there's two songs that I'll put on when I want to you know, I want an emotional outlet. Um, Sweet Thing from Diamond Dogs, Bowie, mm. and uh, Since I've Been Loving You, Led Zeppelin. Quite different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I th another nice quote I picked out of the book was, distraction, entertainment, and love can be just as vital as medicine. Yes. Um, because I think there's a very traditional approach taken with, with mental health, mental illness, which is counselling, therapy, medication, um, certainly friendships as well, but I think it's important to note that these forms of entertainment and distraction, as you said, mm. is, is very, very important as well. Well, it's, it's changing your brain chemistry. Um, mm. You know, connection in particular, um, it, it controls your dopamine secretion. So if, if you have a really good chat with someone, you walk away from that chat with a healthier brain chemistry than when you went in. Yeah, sure.